but I'm gonna find out. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Respectfully Unknown Podcast. I'm Pooch. Some of y'all know me as Fast Life. I'm here with the MMA IBJJF world champion, our Ms. Brahimai. You know what I mean? Give it up for him. What's up, guys? How's it going? How you feeling, bro? Good, baby. Good. How you that's, feeling? That's what's up. I'm good, man. You know, just chilling another day out here, snowing, windy, <laughs> hectic New York City weather. But yes, we in here, man. We chilling. Yes, sir. How you doing? Oh, I'm good, brother. Just trying to take it all in and enjoy the time that I have here in New York and... Uh, Trying to make the most of it, you know? That's what's up, bro. That's what's up. Um, so what I know is that you're from New York originally, but you moved out to Dallas recently. Um, how's it been with the transition going on out there? Uh, it's good. Uh, I moved in 07. So okay. So it's been a little while, but, you know, I'm, I'm back and forth. I try to come to New York as much as possible. I still have a ton of family. Okay. And I try to stay in contact with a lot of my friends and, and everybody out here as All much right. as possible. So cool. I love it, man. It's 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 a good... Uh, Texas has become a second home for me, so it's... Uh, That's fire, bro. I think I've fully adapted to... Different cultures? Is that a culture shock? Is it... Uh, in, in the beginning, it was definitely a culture shock. Cool. You know? Now it's... I'm, I'm quite used to it. I think I'm, uh, I guess you could say, a naturalized Texan. Something along those lines, you know? Okay. Can you give me, like, a rundown of the story of how you got started in mixed martial arts and what inspired you to get started in the sport? What inspired you to get into the sport? So, it's, it's a very good question. I was... A young kid, and my dad, you know, he's, he's, he immigrated here to the Bronx, and he was just always big on me knowing how to defend myself, you know, being from back in Kosovo. Of course, bro. That's, the Albanian, Albanian, That's way, the Albanian way. That's the Albanian way, bro. They're very tough, machismo-based people. So, uh, you know, my dad wanted me to really get into boxing, everything like that. So I started off at Morris Park Boxing Gym Sick. when I was a young kid. Yeah, and, uh, legendary. Just, just took off, and I remember I took some time off of, of – training and fighting and everything. And when we moved to Texas, I started to pick back up on uh, training around my junior year of high school. Okay, that was more like MMA or was that more boxing? Yeah, man, it was MMA actually. Okay. I, I, I fell madly in love with grappling and uh, you know, catch wrestling, jujitsu, all Got that you. stuff. So it just definitely took off, you know. It was, it was something that, you know, I, I did as a hobby. And I was like, you know what? Maybe I might fight, maybe not. My goal okay. was probably to do army or something like that. Some, okay. Some crazy shit. So do you have any history with military or any training in that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I was a reservist. I enlisted, I think, in 2012, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. And I went to basic okay. training in 2013, job training, AIT, all that stuff. And then uh, I did a six and two contract, which is six years obligatory duty, two years inactive, ready reserve. And, uh, oh man, we up. we appreciate your service, oh, bro. Oh man, thank you already. Thank yeah, you. I man. That, Facts, you. yeah. Who were some of the people you looked up to when you were uh, coming up in the uh, martial arts world and the MMA and wor world, or when you were young? Some of the people who inspired you and you know what I mean gave you that tenacity to go harder. In, in terms of fighters that I've I've looked up to, um, when I was starting off, it was uh, I used to watch a lot of Anderson Silva, uh, Fedor Emelianenko, and Kazushi Sakuraba. Yeah, Fedor. Yeah, Fedor, man, he was he was a beast. You know, the dude just like would be emotionless whenever he yep. fight. You know, he, he looked like he just rolled out of the couch and just started knocking people completely yep. out. You know? I think he was what was he in K one or um. <clears throat> so he, he he did dream a little bit and uh, but he was I think he did dream and he was primarily uh, pride pride fighting yep pride fighting yep. a lot of stuff like that. Yeah. Him and Kazushi Sakuraba, Anderson Silva, yep. all those guys really cut their teeth in that promotion. So. It's one of those crazy promotions where they would be in Japan and just soccer kicking everybody. And yep. The, the rules were quite, quite, quite free. Yep. I, rem I remember watching some, um, I think, Mirko Krokop fights on yeah, Pride. He used, to, he used to go crazy on there too, man. Yeah, man. Mirko yep. was a fucking tank back in the day. Yep. I liked, I liked, I liked watching Mirko a lot. You know, he was one of those dudes, um, obviously he's not far from our neck of the woods, you know. In yeah. Croatia, so. Yep. He was, he was knocking dudes clean out with those uh, left head kicks, you know, just sending people to the cemetery with them. Okay. What has been some of your most challenging um, obstacles in the MMA world? You know what I mean? Like, I know it's a rigorous training. I know it's really hard uh, uh, discipline and, and diet and, and strength, and, and it's a lot of mental battles. Like, what, what are some of the, some of the uh, hardships of the MMA world? Man, there's, there's plenty, you know, um, you're trying to balance your social life, your personal life, your family life, all that stuff. And then on top of that, you got a professional career to take care of. Okay. Um, 
on top of that, injuries too, you know, so it's definitely not easy. I would say it's one of those things that it's like uh, trying to find the balance for everything is, is the hardest part of it. And um, I think some of those struggles, man, have just been overcoming injuries. I think the majority of the time is, is injuries more, more than anything, than even fighting itself. You know, that's the, that's the thing you got to watch out for. And how, do you, how do you try to stay healthy and watch out for things like that? <sighs> Man, I try to keep my recovery on point as okay. much as possible. You know, I okay. try to, to make sure that everything that I'm doing is not only just training hard, but also making sure that I'm on top of my recovery and, and taking care of myself. And you have a team behind that? You have, like, your trainers and your coaches, everybody's on, you know what I mean? Do they push you to the point where they know that you're going to, you know what I mean? Like, hey, do they give you a heads up? Hey, Ramiz, you know, you should chill out a little bit. You're going a little hard today. You know, we need you healthy for this. Or they, they stay on top of you? Or are you more, like, self-aware of that type of... It's it's a fine line of both. You okay. know what I mean? Because it's you 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 have your coaching staff there and your mm -hmm. teammates and everybody that knows you very well. Okay. And then you also have to be very self conscious and know yourself very well too, because sometimes you could be pushing that limit a little bit too much and the red line in your body, and sometimes people don't see that. Right? You could you could push through all the injuries and stuff like that, but it's not necessarily the best thing to do. So having those people around me, my team, my coach, and uh, all that stuff, they get to see ever since they've been with me for so long. They know when I'm kind of getting the point of fatigue and when it's going to start to reach injury levels and stuff. So they tell me to taper down, tell me to take a day off, recover. All I got you. Stuff. So recovery is super important. With that. That's dope. That's dope, man. Well, while we're on that subject, what are your what are some of your um, training techniques or some? How do you get ready for a fight or you know what I mean? What 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 gets you hype? What what's part of your uh, camp? Man, so for me. I just love fighting in general. You know what I mean? I'm I'm a natural born competitor. Yeah, Albanian, I like, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like to get out there. I like to compete, man. It doesn't matter to me. Uh, I, I already have all the motivation in the world. Thank God to be able to do that. So it's one of those things that I think for me, I just um, the spirit of competition. I would say, you know, and uh, the ability to make myself better in the process of the spirit uh, of competition. Yeah, the, you know. In the process of, of, of uh, competing and doing all that stuff, I make myself a better fighter, a better man and everything. So Absolutely. I would definitely say, I think, for me, it's just a lot of natural motivation, right? What's some of the toughest training that you go through? Is it, you know, do you go through, like, do you do a lot of running? Do you do a lot of lifting? Do yeah. you do a lot of sparring? I would, I would definitely say our, our Thursday nights, which is our wrestling night. Okay. Right? We do a lot of wrestling, a lot of grappling, man. Those are the, the grindy nights, you yep. know? You're there for an hour, hour and a half. Sometimes it's a two-hour practice. Those are those uh, pretty grueling, grinding practices where sometimes you'll be uh, king of the hill, right, where you'll have a bunch of new new training partners uh, filtering in and uh, wrestling you and all that stuff. So it's it's tough. Thursday night, our wrestling nights are usually the toughest nights out of the week. So I, I get you. Say wrestling would be yeah, that's probably card the, the cardio is probably nuts yeah, cardio that, king, bro. man. That's the thing. You got to try to be cardio king in wrestling room. So that's the best stuff. How has the landscape of the MMA world changed since you've gotten into it, since you were a fan of it, and what it's become now? How it's becoming so uh, commercialized? They're, they're having slap fights. They're having UFC. They have uh, uh, bare-knuckle boxing. You got people like Logan Paul coming out with his own stuff. You know, like, what, what do you feel like the state of MMA is in right now? So, I can obviously, I can only attest and speak for MMA. Okay. Um, the, thing, the thing is... I think all the other exposure, the slap fighting, all that bare knuckle stuff, I think it's unique in its own right. Not necessarily something I would partake in. You know? okay. I think there's enough money in the world for me to do <laughs> bare knuckle, man, or, or slap fight it. I don't know. Okay. I think that, that shit's kind of crazy. Do you feel like those are more gimmicks of the MMA world? Just kind of try to capitalize <sighs> off the gains because people see that it's becoming a more popular and more uh, uh, more of a capital business now. Yeah. And a, uh, it's a becoming a worldwide sport. That's actually a pretty interesting standpoint. I, I would think so, right? You know, um, it's one of those things where they try to catch a wave, right? Uh, do I know how long all these things are going to last? Who knows, right? Yeah. Um, but do I know that MMA is going to be around for a very long time? Yes. I see the landscape has changed drastically since I've gotten into the sport. You, you see a lot of old school guys, right? They're in their... They're in their peaks, right? When you see guys like GSP and the evolution that's come with mixed martial arts, now you see a lot more developed fighters, right? Okay. You see a lot more athletes. And now there's a bigger talent pool to draw from. You got guys from Russia. You got guys from South America. You got guys from all, all parts of Europe, Africa, Asia. 
And I think in the next couple of years, what we're going to start to see is a lot more in sync fighters with their athleticism, technique, strength and conditioning, all that stuff. And I think you're going to start to see another, another phase or I guess another era of fighters that's going to come up. That's going to be just as impressive that, as the past one. You yeah, know, so. I'm, I'm really excited for that, man. I'm, I've been a fan of MMA for a while. Yeah. And I've been following UFC for a while, boxing for a while. So, you know what I mean? Just, you've seen just, it, right? You've seen how much it's changed. You know, I mean, I remember when Leota Machida came out with his karate technique yeah. and nobody could stop him. Nobody could stop and him. And then the Brazilian, the you know what I mean? And then somebody came, knocked him out. And then it's just like, I feel like it's, it's these techniques, like you said, it, it's also like a cultural and a regional thing. Yeah. You know, now you have these Dagestani guys who have yeah. their Dagestani wrestling. They're really thoroughbred dudes. Yeah. And it's kind of hard to beat these guys right yeah, now. Absolutely. Why? Because I feel like maybe the rest of the MMA world isn't used to that technique. Yeah. It's it's so um, concentrated to one uh, uh, section of the world where it's they don't really let that out yet. Kind of like Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu when it first came out. You know, when Renzo Gracie came and he was beating the shit out of everybody, yeah. you know, nobody knew how to stop him. He's rolling in the ground, breaking ankles, breaking knees. <laughs> You know what I mean? No, it's the truth. You know, yeah. and I think I think that's gonna be interesting too to see what the next what the next phase or what the next pocket or region of the world is gonna be offering or possessing. So I think it's one of those things. It's a great point that you brought up. You know, it's a very interesting point because I remember when when I was young. You know, jujitsu obviously was dominating. People didn't know how to stop Hoist, all the Gracies, everything like that. Well, Kazushi Sakuraba back in Pride, he was the Gracie hunter. There you go. You know, so he was an interesting cat, and you're always gonna have a new style, a new technique that's going to come out. And like you said, whenever Lyoto came out, everybody's like, dude, what the fuck's he doing? Different this technique. Crazy, Even like, McGregor, when McGregor came out with his Irish boxing stuff, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it was like distance management, all that stuff is it, it, incredible. It's, 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 I feel like they've made the fighting, and it's not they've made it, but I feel like uh, fighting is also a big cultural thing. Yeah, you know 100%. what I mean? Every culture has their fighters and their warriors, yeah, yeah. and they have their own styles and techniques. And I, I see it in a lot of the fighters in the UFC or in the MMA world. Definitely. Where um, they represent that in their um, style. Definitely, I see um, it too. What are some of the funny anecdotes or behind the scenes uh, gags and goofs that the MMA world has, or that you can tell me about you or you know what I mean? Your training and pranks you guys play on each other, right. or just you know funny stuff that happens behind the scenes that you know regular fans probably wouldn't know about. I mean, for the most part, I know that me and a lot of my teammates like we just. We're not we're not too crazy into the whole pranking thing. We make okay. jokes all the time, obviously, okay. because it's like we already beat the shit out of each other day in and day out, right? Yeah, it's that's not much that's to, that's a prank. That's a <laughs> jokes much, on yeah, you, buddy. <laughs> you getting yeah. punched in the face today. So I mean, it's it's not necessarily stuff that we prank each other on. Uh, we send each other memes. We we make each other laugh every time we're in the training room. That's obviously, dope. when it's time to be serious, it's time to be serious. Um, but you do meet a lot of of, of interesting cats. I would definitely say that my team down at Fortis uh, in Dallas. You know, we got, a, we got a really interesting group of guys from all different types of backgrounds. I, I, I look at it like the United Nations, right? I got you. There's like people from all different walks of life. You got people from all different types of backgrounds. So everybody there just makes it so unique, you know. And uh, I think a lot of the credit is to my coach, Coach Safe. I think he's done a tremendous job with having such a stable of fighters and being able to manage every single one of them. Shout out Coach Safe. Yeah, 100%. Shout, big shout out to Coach Safe. He's a great guy, man. Uh, done done a lot of things for me and for the whole team. That's um, dope. I don't think he gets enough praise. I think he actually needs a lot more praise for a lot of things that he does, his management of us and his coaching. I think he is, in my opinion, probably the best, the best, if not the best coach in the world right now. Gangster. And he's going to keep showing it. And I think that there's going to be a lot more memorable performances that a lot of the guys from Fortis are going to be putting out there into the world and uh, That's dope, man. a lot more memorable coaching moments from Coach Safe. As we all know, he's a very hard-nosed guy and uh, he, he gets <laughs> straight to business, man. He, uh, dude, I don't think I've ever seen him not be business-oriented. That's dope, man. How do you stay connected with your fans, um, your supporters, and the followers that you have? And, um, you know, like, well, how, is the, how has that growth been over the past few years and over your career? <clears throat> man, I'll tell you what. I am not the best at it. I've got to get better, um, be it good or bad. Because um, I know I used to be a little bit better. I used to engage a lot more. As of lately, I haven't. I know I've been slacking off on that. i got to get better at that. Okay. Um, sometimes it's like whenever people talk shit to me, like it has to be a good kind of shit talk, like from fans, 
for me to get something to get your attention. Yeah, I but you. I mean, listen, I, get you. I, I gotta get I gotta get better at that. I, I, it's not that I want to engage in the shit talk, but okay. sometimes it's, it's it's funny. You know, the New York in me comes out, and of course the, the, the banter comes back, and I'm like, yeah. hey, wait a second, I heard you talking shit. I gotta say this back to you. Of you know? course, bro. But it's uh, I gotta get better at that. You know, the the, the support has like definitely... Albanians would say, "Must my You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You gotta yeah, represent, a, bro. Yeah, hundred percent. And it's, you it's, see somebody posting some Twitter finger shit on the Instagram or on social media, you gotta back that up bro 100 percent. it's funny I hear so that. I, i'll engage in the banter sometimes i try not to too much but as far as the good support man it's it's been incredible you know that's what's um up. throughout the years i've seen it grow and grow uh from when i was just a regional fighter and nobody really knew too much about me to to now where i'm still trying to get my name out there and still trying to become uh a well well uh well, multi-dimensional fighter. Gotcha. You know, where, where I get out there and uh, not only do I get support from Albanians, but I get support from all over the world. That's, of course. That's something that's very big to me. You know, um, whenever people take time out to recognize, you know, fighters and, and appreciate fighters and their styles, their techniques, all that stuff, it's very big to me. You know, yeah. so it's definitely something that I'm very supportive of. The good, the bad, whatever, whatever it comes, you know, it's 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 all yeah. a part of the sport. So it's, I got it's you. Good. All opinions are good, man. I, I I I like that you're open minded about that. You know, people can talk shit. The internet is a place where people are mostly opinionated and they're gonna state their mind on any stupid matter. So yeah, for sure. you know what I mean? To have discipline on not to go crazy on everybody who writes some stupid thing on no, their post is you know, it's not even really worth it. And it's, you man. That's bravo to you, bro. No, you because I know I have a fucking short temper. <laughs> <laughs> I would be on there for I would be calling them. I'll be I'll be Instagram calling them like a people, oh, like Jesus. people be doing so respectfully unknown, just calling them randomly, like, "Yo, bro, I need to talk to you." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, I don't think I could do that, man. Right. I, I definitely, I've, I've grown a lot past that, so it's, it's, it's that's what's up, man. What do you see for the future of, of of your MMA career or your career in general? Um, what would you like to accomplish, and what's one of your goals or some of your goals that you want to fulfill while you're, you know, still young, still fighting, still out here, man? So I have quite a few goals, you know, that I have in mind. Uh, I would definitely say, obviously, work my way through the rankings. Uh, eventually, work my get a good win streak going on, get ranked, and obviously get a couple of performance bonuses. You know, that's something that Fuck I really yeah. look forward to. You know, and uh, I think it's exciting. Like like we said earlier, right? The landscape of MMA is a lot more interesting now. So the matchups have definitely gotten a lot tougher. And with that toughness, it's a lot more exciting. You see what I'm saying? So I definitely know that um, there's a lot of good dance partners out there for me. You know, whenever I could chop it up and mix it up with them in the cage. Fuck yeah. And uh, it's going to be a lot of good performances. So I look forward to that. Obviously, some of my goals are definitely going to be getting on a good win streak and uh, start to put my name out there a lot more. You know, that's yeah, something I can't wait for that, bro. I swear. I can't wait for that, man. You know, I always get excited to support and... Um, and see Albanians doing good, but yeah, you, you're sure. a good brother, bro. Yeah, and and it's, you God know, the sure. Albanian shit goes that just that far, but you're a good human being too, Thank my you, brother. And you know, hopefully you, you fulfill that and you Thank do that you. in your Appreciate future. That, so. Thank you. Um, what are the, some of the behind the scenes uh, uh, fights? Like, how do these fights get set up? How do your rankings get set up? Or, and how does that work? How do you, how would you gain the, you, you have to win multiple fights or how does how do these things work i don't have no idea on that is, yeah, it, is sure. it promotion based is it manager based you know what i mean so it's it's unique in its own right okay so i would say there's not necessarily a recipe for it okay it's just one of those things that it's trying to strike iron while it's hot right you know you have some guys that they'll go on a three four fight win streak and in that four fights they're getting ready to be ranked right they're going to get fight somebody who's in the top 15 or top, not necessarily the top 10. They got to work their way up to the top 10. So they they have a certain type of charisma. You see what I'm okay. saying? Um, but then again, you have guys who are a little bit overly charismatic. And okay. They don't necessarily get the matchups. That they deserve. Or, or the big fights that they want. So okay. it's it's unique in its own right. It's it's case by case basis, I would definitely say. Um you know, you have some dudes that have went on seven, eight fight win streaks and they're still struggling to crack the top five I got you. or something like that. So you have some dudes that they, they win three, four fights and they're already in the top 15. So yep. There's, I, I don't know if there's necessarily a right or wrong recipe for it. I okay. know that um, UFC usually comes up to you with the matchups and you take them. Okay. That's how I know it to Dope. be. That's yeah. how I've always been. Um, unless you're injured or unless something really serious is happening. But you take those fights and you obviously do your best to try to excel and win those fights because obviously you can't be denied whenever you win, right? And you go out there, you're dominant, 
you handle business um, inside the octagon, outside the octagon, with your, uh, you know, with media, with all that stuff, and that's how you 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 won't get denied. You see I got you. So yep. Sometimes it's gonna take longer. Sometimes it's gonna take shorter. I don't really know necessarily what the the right recipe is. I'm still trying to figure it out. Right I got now. you. I, I understand. That's cool. That's dope, bro. Um, I I mean I ask these questions because I see like fighters like uh, uh, Alex Perea. You know, he knocked out. Uh, uh, Adesanya a few times and he didn't really fight in the UFC. I think he had like two fights before his title shot or whatever the heck. You know what I mean? So like to me it's like who decides this? Like you know people are just are they doing it for the hype? Are they doing it for the money? For the promotion? Are they just bringing people in? You know what I mean? No I think it's more or less for the storyline. You see what I'm saying? So like sometimes uh, as we all know it storylines captivate us right? So you look at the uh, Israel Adesanya Alex Pereira matchups they had a lot of history in kickboxing. Obviously, there was bad blood. Um, and then, you know, Alex Pereira comes into the UFC. He does good in his debut, uh, wins his next fight, gets another fight where he fights Sean Strickland, which was a major yeah. step up for him. Yes. Knocks Sean Strickland out, who's the current champion. That's yep. impressive in its own right. Yep. And then he gets a title shot against uh, Israel Adesanya. He knocks Israel Adesanya out. And it's just kind of like a crazy storyline. You see what I'm saying? that they have that much history, and now it's transferred over into the UFC. So, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say that it's a shot in the dark or done, like, uh, spontaneously. I definitely think it's one of those things where, you know, a lot of thought is put into it. So, it's the storyline adds up a lot, and usually that's, that's how it goes, you know? Whatever, whatever oh. makes sense and whatever can capture the, the attention of everybody. Uh, tell us about, a little bit about your uh, personal upbringing. Um, you were telling me earlier that your father came to the Bronx, and um, you could just elaborate on that a little bit. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, me, just like a bunch of other Albanian, first-generation born Albanian Americans, my uh, family immigrated to the Bronx, you know. Uh, <laughs> they, they, they found it to be their home, away from home, and uh, unique spot, needless to say. Hell yeah, little Albania. Yeah, so um, growing up, it was a lot more different, you know. Yeah. Uh, People didn't really know what Albanians were too much. Uh, the, the the community, in my opinion, I think it was a little bit more tight knit uh, because we had a lot of immigrants, you know. So I, I think that played a big, big role into the way that I was I was raised. You know, my dad, he uh, always always taught me how to have pride in my culture and all that, all of that. You know, be be proud to be an Albanian, and everything like that. Yep. And, you know, don't let nobody mess with you, all that good stuff. So it definitely uh, was was interesting growing up, you know. Um, and then just all the stuff that you learn from being in New York City, in the Bronx as well. You get to be exposed to a lot of different people, a lot of different ethnicities. Different cultures and yeah, stuff, yeah. Yeah, all of that. It's, it's a big melting pot, you yep. know. So I definitely, definitely think uh, my upbringing was a unique one, right? And uh, I remember when I moved to Texas, that's when it got a little bit more unique, you know. I was around... Uh, a lot more of a, of a certain concentrated people, you know. Like I got when, you. When I moved over there, it was, it was predominantly white. I tell it's a little bit more American over there. Yeah, it was it was a lot more American. I, I like it though. It was, it was fun. I, I remember when I got home from high school one day. Uh, it was like the first or second day. I just got home from high school. I was like, Mom, it feels like I'm a High School Musical. You know, like, <laughs> this feels kind of crazy. That's hilarious. So, it was definitely interesting. Nah, that's I'm a suburban dude. Yeah, it was it was that's, it was, it was interesting, man. But I, I I love Texas to death. You know, I think. That, that's, I think I've blended in. Uh, I think it's a good fit for me. Not blended in. I think it's it's a great fit for me. Uh, you know, whenever I think of America, I think of Texas. You know, and um, a lot of freedoms, a lot of stuff out there. So it's definitely something that I love. You know, I yeah. think I think uh, Texas reminds me a lot of like Kosovo, of Albania. What it truly okay. is, you know. So farmland, country. Yeah, you have that, and then you have humbleness. City. Yeah, you have a lot I got of good you. stuff out there. I love it. Personally, yeah, I love it. that's what's up, man. Um, what do, what do you do like on your spare time? What are other, some other hobbies that you have other than MMA? Well, MMA is your career. What are some hobbies that you have? What do you do to enjoy yourself, uh, pass the time? You know what I mean? Out in, um, Texas or New York or wherever you are in the world. Man, I've always, I've always loved shooting. I've always loved weapons. Always nice. I've loved, uh, bushcrafting, right? Learning how to, you know, survive in the wild, off the grid, everything. Sick. Uh, so I've definitely been a lot more active in uh, shooting, training with weapons, all that stuff. That's dope. So it's, it's definitely something that helps me pass the time. Bushcrafting uh, is something that I like too. I like to to learn how to be off the grid, how to 
how to, how to really let how to see things function in their in their purest form, right? How to start a fire, how to build a base camp, all that stuff. So, so I'm guessing you've been camping. Yeah, I definitely. I What's love the camping. longest amount of time you've been out there? Like you know, off the grid, just doing your thing. Man, I I haven't been that hard in the paint yet. Oh, okay, I think, uh, okay. okay. I did I did an Airbnb trip, man. It was uh, the cl- cl- it was it was it was a unique trip. I did back I in 2022. I went out to uh, I went out to Big Bend in West Texas. You know. Okay. Um, and it was a unique freaking trip, man. I, I stood in a in a place called the Outpost, right? So this Airbnb, you had to. It was about I think eight and a half hours from Dallas, and when you get there, you have to have an all terrain vehicle or like an off roading vehicle, like a Jeep or, or something like yeah, that. You're not getting there with no Mercedes or BMW. No, definitely guys. not. I'm sorry, you're, you're, guys. Not, getting, you're you not getting there with a force. Four you're not getting there with a Golf. Maybe actually, you know, the Gulfs and Kosovo be going on the craziest yeah, roads, do. so <laughs> you never know. You might up, you might even get out there with a Gulf, but you're not getting over there with a Mercedes, guys. But I, I spent about four days out there, and the the unique thing about that trip was when you get to the base uh, base of the camp, right? To get to the Airbnb, it's going to take you another twenty minutes, right? And it's very hilly, very rugged okay. terrain. Yeah. Not necessarily a road that you follow. It's a lot of a lot of gravel, a lot of loose uh, rocks, all that stuff. So it was unique. When I got there, um, it had electricity. A lot of it was solar. And on top of that, they didn't have running water. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> so a lot of it was uh, potable water that was saved, uh, rainwater that was saved wow. that they caught throughout the year. So they told you to... So, you know, not not go too crazy. So, yeah. you know, before we got there, it was, uh, I packed like MREs, meal ready to okay. eat, all that stuff. So I, I really wanted to be fully embedded in that. You know what I mean? So yeah. it was definitely one of those experiences that was unique. It was a four-day experience. I didn't really do too much of it. So I definitely think I got to go back and uh, yeah, do some man. other stuff. Yeah, man, you're going to become the Bushmaster, bro. That's oh, man, that'd be cool, bro, right? That'd be cool. I mean? Who knows? Maybe after fighting, do some do some crazy Bear grill yeah, type yeah, stuff. Yeah, yo, bro, God bless. Let's do it, man. Definitely, definitely. Yo, um, what are some of the uh, music, musical and inspirations to you? Who do you listen to when you're in training before you get ready for a fight or when you're just trying to calm down after a hard training session? Like, what kind of uh, music are you into? Genres, artists, songs? Whatever you, you know. I have a unique, I guess you could say unique taste in music, right? My boy um, got a, a unique palette. <laughs> yeah, got it's, it's definitely unique. You know, I, I, I'm kind of all over the place. Uh, so for me, I listen to a lot of old, like whenever I listen to hip hop or I listen to rap, I listen to a lot of East Coast rap. You know, I listen okay. to a lot of old school New York stuff, a lot of Jada Kiss, uh, Styles P. I listen to old school Nas, Jay Z, all that Same. stuff. A lot of the a lot of the original pioneers of rap and hip hop in New York. I got you. And I always I'm gonna have a soft spot for New York. You know, being from New York myself, so it's one of those things that um, I listen to. I recently, recently, you know, I used to give country music a lot of flack growing up, but I listen to a lot of older old school country music. You know, okay. Like, I like I like Willie Nelson. I like. Okay. Uh, yeah. Johnny Cash, all those, all those good. Old I mean, that's kind of considered day. like classic rock and like American rock now. But yeah. I, I understand what you mean. Yes, that kind of it's a little bit more Certain, country, new, newer age country. I kind of, kind of, kind of have a harder time uh, clicking onto it. But there's, there's, there's a few of my teammates that listen to a lot of country, and they've, they've put me onto it. So I definitely like. Uh, Man, imagine listening to a sick country song right before you about to go beat the shit out of somebody, <laughs> bro. You're gonna. Get I don't, I don't, I don't know up. if, I don't know if that would get me. I don't know if that would get me ready or in the right mindset for me before I fight. I don't, I don't really listen to anything all to right, be honest. Right. I like to. Uh, Get in touch with myself and my creator. You know, I like to I like to be not necessarily like secluded from everybody, but what I like to do is I, I like to before I fight, before I compete in, in any any shape or form, I like to really, 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 really be one like with my mind, with with God, with everything with like the that. universe. Yeah, you know, faith is a, is a very big thing to me, and um, it's something that I hold near and dear to myself. It's something that's helped me overcome a lot of tasks, a lot of challenges throughout life. So before I compete and do a lot of things, you know, I like to make sure that I take some time away, you know, radio silent, get off my phone, everything awesome. like that. And, uh, you know, I just, just try to not only be in the moment, but also be right with the creator, you know. So that's what's good, up, man. Be good. Yeah, locked in, bro, for sure. Yeah, it's a, like I said, man, it takes a different kind of discipline. I mean, I've, I, I've trained jiu-jitsu for a little bit, white belt, you know, some intermediates, beginners, little stuff. And, you know, just just thinking about, like, how you said, not really listening to music and just kind of getting in tune with yourself and just getting that kind of uh, yeah. uh, self, um, 
peace. Yeah. It's like that inner peace that you can just feel like you're able to conquer anything. It's 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 a different kind of it's it's, it's a high in itself, honestly. Definitely. And it, and and it, you know it takes you there. And yo, I, I feel like some of the most successful people have actually conquered and like uh, mastered that art of doing. Yeah, it, definitely. Man. It's something. To peace master. to you. Peace to you. Oh, and, no, thank and, you. And congrats that. on that, man. We got we got to get you back to training. Yo, man. We got to get shit. you back into some I got good bad shape. Knees, bro. It doesn't matter, man. It doesn't matter. <laughs> bro. We'll give you some steroids. Yeah, or something. man. Yo, shout out to Coach Quinn, man. We. I'm not coming back to the gym, but if, if he inspires me, maybe I'll hit you up, bro. We gotta get you, <laughs> you back in saying? there, man. We gotta get you back in That's there. You're still sick, young, bro. You're still young. Um, what are some of your favorite movies? Some of your favorite actors, and uh, you know, what 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 kind of uh, what kind of lane of entertainment are you in? Like, do you ever see yourself getting into any of the entertainment world after this MMA world? Do you see yourself <clears> maybe uh, being a sportscaster or? You know, opening up some kind of a gym or seeing some kind of, you know, like what do you see as far as entertainment wise and media wise and, and, and the way that that correlates with your. Right now, I'm keeping an open mind. You okay. know what I mean? Um, it's uh, being an analyst, working a go. desk uh, for fighting, um, giving back some of the knowledge that I've learned and some of the stuff that I've learned would definitely be something that I would love to do in the future. Dope. Commentating for fights is something that I would definitely love to do in the future. Dope. Um, I'm going to keep an open mind towards it. You know, I know a lot of guys, once they're done fighting, they're like, oh, I'm done fighting. I don't want to deal with this stuff anymore. Okay. But I definitely see a lot of different things on my horizon, you know, post-fight career. It's obviously something that it's kind of a touchy subject for a lot of active fighters. I got you. But um, to me, it's it's not that big of a deal because obviously you want to plan for the future. You know what I mean? So it's post-fighting, I definitely do see myself coaching, um, you know, maybe working uh, here and there, analyst, commentating for fights. I would love to do that. That's dope. I think I have a pretty good knack for it. I've done it before, and uh, I think I did a pretty good job at it. So it's definitely something that I would love to – Love to do, and I definitely do see in the future, you know? So That's what's up, man. I would definitely like to. Definitely like to. That's dope. What's your relationship with uh, Respectfully Unknown, and how did you guys get acquainted, and and what's that been like? Um, give me a little bit more on that. So, you know, me and him are really, really close. You know, we've been close since uh, even before pre-K. You know, okay. we grew up together. I, I really do think, like, we were just in the same cradle together, to be honest, you know? Gangster. Uh, so... He's, he's a very, very close... I look at him as like my brother, you know, and I respect what he's doing with this with, with this whole platform, with the podcast uh, platform and everything that he's doing. I think it's, it's given a lot of uniqueness, right, to his page, to the podcast, and to yep. the future of all that, right, where it's not necessarily just solely based on one thing. Yep. It's going to cover a, a, a big, a wide variety, wide topics of... Of a lot of different things, so yeah, it's, it's, it's something like, that it's I'll like I, I, I feel like it's like a great uh, social platform. You know what I mean? Hundred percent. I'm really close with homie too. He's the greatest. You know what I mean? Always cool, always official. You know what I mean? We got the burgers on B here. They, you know what I mean? Had the lunch come over here. You know, he's always making great relationships with everybody, and he's always networking with the right people and and just helping people build their brands while he's helping himself build his brand. And you know what I mean? I, I just. Uh, it's great to get into the same room as you because I have a, you know, a few things in, in, in common with you and, and, and it's a pleasure to meet you because you know, you're know you somebody I look up to and respect well, man, and being from that. the MMA world and something that's, a, that's one of my uh, passions and stuff like that. So you know, we got to link up on his platform and it's just like, that's pretty good for me too. It's, it's just and I think that's, brings that's... me some kind of a, a sense of like, you know, something's building here. Yeah. This is the first episode. You know what I mean? There's going to be multiple hosts, multiple guests. There's going to be all types. Of, it's only going to grow bigger and bigger. 100%. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm a firm believer in yeah, that. So I think it's, it's going to be very good. And like I said, it's it's a unique mix. You know, you're going to be able to see certain people talking to one another that you probably would have not necessarily thought that they would be Absolutely. communicating. So it's it's... I think it's you're going to be bridging a lot of gaps. Yep, and it's a great it's a great platform. It's a platform. It's a great platform for people to get exposed to new people. You know, maybe you you don't know who I am. You don't know who Rum is. You don't know who next week's guest is, or you you know what I mean. And you're an Albanian, or you're just part of a fan of the page, or you just whatever it is. You know, um, I feel like respectfully unknown is giving a great uh, exposure to everybody, man. It's just it's just a dope. Uh, it's comedic. It's serious. It's you know it's a great cause, man. It's just it's just dope. I, I, I'm a fan, you know what I mean? I, I can't hate on it. I can't say nothing bad about it. So, 
Y'all shouldn't either. And if I find out you are, then I'm gonna have to fucking find you. I'm gonna call what I'm to come nah, fuck nah, you up. Nah, 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 I'm not gonna pay for that stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? We coming with the team from Dallas. You heard everybody coming to fuck you with, man. Nah, I'm just fucking around. But but yeah, man. Um, I, I love what he's doing with this platform, man. Um, what are some of the other platforms that you've been on? Like, you know, like uh I know that you uh part of the UFC, but like what are some of the um platforms that you uh, work with or some of the sponsors you work with or some, you know what I mean? Some of the gyms you work with, anybody you want to shout out or... Man, you know, I more than team. anything, yeah, yeah, more than anything, just my team. Gangsta. You know, I think uh, a lot of those guys back home, you know, a lot Gangsta. of my main, my main training partners, my coach, you know, my, my family, all that stuff, I think they, they played a pivotal role, vital role in, in my growth and my success. So I definitely want to give a shout out to them and also my brother, you know, he's, he's hosting his podcast, he's hosting his page and doing all this all this good stuff. So for me, it's more than anything. It's 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 a good thing to be surrounded by a lot of great things, you know. So yeah. it it definitely it makes it makes a world of difference for me to to be around this kind of stuff, you know. Yep, so absolutely. To, to, to same here. Nah, same here. Definitely. I would never think I would see myself on a podcast, hosting a podcast, or interviewing anybody. Um, I've only been interviewed myself personally a couple of times, so it's yeah. like it's still fresh and new to me too. But um, at the same time, it's like a great experience and it's an eye-opening experience. It's something that I've been wanting to try and do for as sure, well for, the, for a while. You know what I mean? 100%. I have great social skills. You have great social skills. Well, you know what I mean? So Appreciate we have all the fucking support and platform. Everybody's here. We all we got this whole setup going on beautifully. You know what I mean? We got the food. We got the drinks. And that's just how it is. We got the Big Apple Roasters. Shout out to Big Apple Roasters keeping us caffeinated. You know what I mean? <laughs> Fresh roasted coffee here in the Big Apple. Yes, you know what I mean? It's just, like I said, respectfully unknown, always making that network, always building these brands and, 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 and networking with these people and bringing people together. And it's just a beautiful thing, man. I, I, I'm uh, glad to have met you today. My man, I'm thank is, you. And uh, it's a appreciate pleasure. It, Definitely going to build with you in the future. 100%. Appreciate and that. Official. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Yep, absolutely. It, thank you.